Hi everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this imaginary forest. It's got beautiful colors, nice and bright. And my canvas is 11 by 14 canvas board. And to create that circle, I uh, have a very expensive tool. It's the paper plate. It, it depends on the size of your canvas. You can use this small paper plate or whatever you have at home. If your canvas is 60 by 20, use a larger one. Mine is 11 by 14. And the way I did it, I, with my fingers, I kind of center it. Two fingers on each side and the same thing on the top, just so it looks centered. Just so your eye doesn't go to one side or the other. And we're going to start with blue, of course. That's a night scene. You can, if you use it, uh, orange and yellow, it will be a sunset. But this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, you can change the colors to whatever you want. This is just a suggestion. And also, whatever shade of blue you have. On this one, I use a royal blue. On this today's painting, I'm going to use a different color. It's, a, uh, it's called True Blue, True Navy. So it will be a little bit different shade than that. So I created my circle with the paper plate upside down. I held it and just drew a circle with, or semi-circle, just leave an opening about that white on the bottom. That's going to be for your water to come in. And as we go, I'll tell you what kind of brushes I'll be using. And this is a soft bristle flat brush and that's what you need to make a perfect line when you go around and what we're going to do first always wet it and I'm going to wet the canvas you know that I always do that so the paint uh, flows better obviously I used this on this dark paint before and that's very it's not very clean but we're going to use the dark color so it really does not matter The reason to wet your canvas is because the cloth will absorb your, absorb your paint and it will not let you mix it. Don't ask me how I know. You can use a scruffy brush for this. You don't, you don't need to use your good brushes for this. Okay, it's nice and wet. We're going to start, I'm going to start on my left, and I think this is going to be the most difficult part for me because I don't usually paint on an easel. I always paint on a table, but for tutorial purposes, I need to do this. So we're going to do our best, and if for some reason you get out of the circle, don't worry. With white, we can always fix it. There's no mistakes in painting. Everything can be fixed. And we're going to start the thickness of the brush. This is probably going to be the most consuming part of the painting. And when you're home, just you don't have to do it the way I do it. It's not looking straight. And don't worry about it not looking even here. It, it, it doesn't matter. What's really important is for the outer edge to be perfect. I'm going to just do what I can to help me get a perfect circle. And because the canvas is wet, it's allowing me to just go smoothly around that pencil mark. It's not looking like I'm dragging it.
I was going to go ahead and pre-paint this, but then what's the purpose of the tutorial if I don't teach you how it's done? So I had to uh, do it with you guys. Take your time so you make a perfect circle. And it's also relaxing. No one is chasing you. No one is telling you what time to finish. And this is the most difficult part and it's all done. If you have little bumps here and there, go back and kind of fix them. And we're going to put trees on both sides. So only the, the top part is what really, really matters. Okay, now let's fill the uh, circle. And again, it really doesn't matter how you apply it because we're going to put a lot of um, stars and the stars have uh, a little bit of sheen. So the background of the sky, it really doesn't matter how it was applied. And I also add a little bit of water to my brush. Oh no, I added too much. But we can fix it. We can wipe it and it will come completely off. See? And at the end, if for some reason you do what I did, we'll just paint it with white. And we need to leave a space for the moon. And this is, let me, let me get back to finishing this and then I'll show you. You can do either with a sponge, the moon. And if you don't have the tool that I have, I've been creating a lot of a, cutouts out of a plastic cups, uh, this little containers that you get ketchup when you go to McDonald's or somewhere, and this little things. Uh, I use them for the moon because you want a perfect circle, and the circle depends on the size of your canvas. But this is what I'll be using. And I'm not going to use it to put the paint on. I'm going to put it to prevent the blue paint to get inside but if i do this i can do that right now i'm going to put it closer to the edge i'm going to put it right there and my hand is going to be on your way for a little bit until i finish this I bought this at the 99 cent store at the kids section. Try to smooth it as much as you can so you don't come back to that spot. And I think that's good. And I'll watch this later and I see it got a little smudges. I'll clean them up. I'll put white on this, but not until the very end. I'll go ahead and finish painting the sky. And I'll try to make it as smooth as possible now. You don't want to see all those brush strokes. I don't know if you have seen the latest painting that I posted on online paint night and also on my um, on my page about the stairs to heaven. For some reason, people really like them. Uh, I had five orders, and I just shipped them today. 
Three went to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, two to uh, Florida, and one here in California. And I have one also that uh, they're trying to decide whether they want, how many people they want me to put in their painting. And I'm using stencils, as you can see, on those paintings. And they're asking me to do a tutorial on it, so if you do want me to do one, let me know. Um, I do have other paintings that I want to show you at the end of the tutorial that, that you can do. Um, something on a happy note. Okay, let's go to the lake. So, you decide how wide you want your lake. And I think it's nice to make it raggedy like that. So you start in the center and you just do it as straight as possible. And just come across. And let's start narrow, get wider and then come down. Let's do one side first. Now we can start going in. And just scrub, scrub, and let's go all the way to the bottom. The water is gonna go on the floor, but it's okay. Okay, let's go on the other side. And try to do it right across the, the same. Um, don't do it lopsided, but like white on this side and then white up here. It won't look right. So just keep an eye on that. My son loves to fish, and when he saw that painting, he asked me to put a bass jumping out, out of the lake. And uh, I look at my stencils, and I did have one, so I went ahead and added it. You don't have to put it on yours if you don't want to. And lately, I've been using stencils on a lot of my paintings, and I don't know, I, I think they add something to it. Uh, on some of them, if I overdo it, they look kind of cartoonish, but don't overdo it. Just, you know, one or two. What I do love is the birds. All right. That's kind of like the base color. Let's start with the sky now. I can rinse this. All this will be adjusted later. You know, the color is not, uh, it's not even or nothing, but it's okay because we're going to have a lot of water. Always rinse your brushes. Now I'm gonna use a hard bristle scruffy brush. I call them scruffy because, I mean, you can do so much stuff with them. They're not soft bristle like the one which is finished using. Um, go ahead and wet it. And now we need white for the uh, stars. So you wet your brush. nice and wet and you dip it in the paint and then see the water has how wet it is that's what you want and you're gonna get your finger dirty again and test it uh, on not on the palette at first but on the side see how many how big the drops are and I'm, I'm happy with that they're just small drops and this is your index finger and that's your trigger always Turn it like a hook. It, it doesn't matter if we get the paint here because it's white. And that's why we're not going to mask it or cover it or nothing. So we're going to go ahead and go for it. And don't get too close to the canvas. And can you see them? The, the strength of your brush against your finger, it will determine how, how big your drops are. So try not to do it too hard just softly and when you think you have enough you can stop i 
As you can see, this cleaning is very easy. Uh, someone posted a picture of it on online paint night and I asked permission to recreate it and I, I liked it and I thought it was very easy to, to do for you guys. So here it is. I'm happy with that. My finger too. This is how I finish every day with my hands are painted, but it's okay. I have fun. Okay, now we're gonna go and use a liner. Get it nice and wet. And be careful not to put your wrist or your hand on the paint because everything is wet. And be very careful. And try to pick the, I'm gonna just put like my fingernail or just like that for support. Try to pick the drops that are the biggest and let's turn them into stars. And you're gonna create like a little like a little star. And if it's not enough paint, go back to your paint that you did very watery and just do a few. As many as you want, it, it will look it will look nice and make it bright and add something to it. I'll do just a few so you can see how it's done at home. You take your time. And I'm very happy that some of you have posted your work. I it makes me happy that you are learning how to paint and you're enjoying most of all. If it's frustrating, believe me. I won't do it myself and I will not ask you to do it. I love to watch pictures, tutorials that are 15 minutes or less. I don't have the patience to watch a two hour tutorial. I see too many of them. Uh, and first is the first thing I look at, how long is it? And if it's longer than 30 minutes, I'm not watching it. I don't have the time to sit down and watch that. And you know, sometimes if you just look at a painting, it kind of gives you the idea how to do it. You don't have to watch the entire tutorial. Okay, I'm going to let the rest of those drops or stars dry before we do the, the shining of the stars. We're gonna let it sit for a minute. Let me wash this. And Let me see if I can fix that moon right now. I'm gonna use the sponge. Turn this sideways so it can help me. I'm gonna use my arm for support. And I'm pressing it down so the paint goes on the canvas. That's not bad. Then we're gonna put clouds that are going across it, so, but it doesn't look too bad, what do you think? Okay, let's move on to the trees. And for the trees, we need a, uh, we can do it in two different ways. If you don't have a thin brush like this, you can use first a flat brush, for the, the tip of the pine trees. That's all you need, just like the tip, you put a little line for an indication, or even a liner, you can do that. Um, I do have a thin brush, so that's what I'm gonna use. And it's totally up to you how many trees you want, but you we wanna make it like a forest. And for that, we're gonna need green any shade of green you have and add black to it Be because it's nighttime and it should be dark later on we'll bring the highlights very little black almost nothing see how little paint we use so you load your brush and add a little black so you make it nice and dark green And 
first I'm going to position where my trees are going to go. And we start with the tallest one, like we're gonna go like right across the moon. And we'll and we're gonna go outside the, the sky. And we just create lines like this. And the next one. We're just, we're just positioning them where they belong. And right to the edge of the lake. And same thing, you go across, outside. And just separate them about half inch. And that's it. So now with the fan brush, you start with one of the tips of the brush and you touch the top and the pine trees get wider as you come down. And only with the tip of the brush, you go, you center, touch the center and then go side to side like a zigzag. And let's let them come down. They're gonna come down like in a hill. So don't make it, don't bring it down all the way to, let's see, this one to here. So it's gonna be like an angle. The trees are gonna be coming down. So go ahead and bring it down. And remember, get wide as you come down. And then let's go to the next one. I live in California in a very small town and you probably heard on the news how hot it is, how hot it has been. It was 108 and 109 the last couple of days. It's not much you can do outdoors. Uh, painting indoors is the best thing that can happen to you. Okay, these trees are overlapping and that's what you want. What makes you think there's several trees is the tip of the tree. It doesn't matter anywhere else. Just make sure that they overlap. And get them wider, wider, wider. And if the tip of the tree is hiding, we'll bring it back later. We can even use the liner. Okay, let's go to the other side. the tip of the brush, touch the center, and come down. It doesn't look like a tree right now, and it's okay. It will look like a tree at the end. And we're gonna bring it down to here. Thank you for posting your work. I truly enjoy um, watching it and see what you guys have accomplished. And I'm amazed of how much they look alike, like my tutorials. And I'm happy to see that. And I wanna hear your opinion. Uh, what do you think about letting people sell their art on my page? I don't mind if you wanna post your your paintings for sale. You do your uh, dealing with the customer privately, not not on the page. But if they request your painting, go ahead and sell it. That's what I have been doing. I don't post my my paintings for sale. People have requested. They ask me if I if I sell my paintings, and I said yes, I do. Pri send me a private message, and you know we'll come to an agreement and that's how it has been and I I really enjoyed it and don't undersell yourself I mean think how much time you spent creating it and how much love and everything you put on it let them know let them know okay now we're gonna do the shades of the trees and we're gonna just do black and white it's a little grayish color 
and go under the trees and just scrub and do it just like you did on the water just randomly Go back and do black, white. And when you do the ground, always straight across. Don't go sideways because it's like walking drunk, and it will bother your eyes. It, it just it won't look right. So it's just nice and straight. And we'll come back and put grass a little bit. Okay, let's go to the next step, which is the water. Our final step would be the clouds and the shimmering of those stars. So let's go to the water. And for the water, I'm going to use the soft bristle brush. And just go to straight white. I always put my brush because it makes the paint flow better. You want to have it nice, nice and moist, not dripping wet. And again, I'm sorry, I have to pick it up because I cannot go like that. So nice and straight strokes right where your water is coming in start in the very center and just scrub straight try to do it as straight as possible and just bring it across and uneven don't make a straight line we're gonna put the the, um, the moon shining straight below it but this is the shimmering of the water so just come straight across and even you can miss a couple of spaces if you want to it will give it more depth and see because my brush is nice and wet I'm able to do this. Okay, now we establish our water lines. Now, let's do a little bit of a star shining on the water. And for that, we use this hard bristle brush again. And we're going to try to make it as straight as possible. So squeeze it so it's nice and straight. And you're going to go to the white paint straight down. You only want paint on the very tip. And you're just, just going to touch the canvas. Do not push it down. You just want the canvas to take a little bit of paint. And let's start right in the very center. And I'm just barely touching the canvas, just letting it take what it wants. And when you look at it from far away, it looks like it's, the stars are shining on, on the water. And go back and reload. I can do this. I see I, I push too hard. That's that's a no. And mainly in the center, make it nice and thicker. I mean the the, uh, the touching because that's where the uh, stars are shining the most. So there you have 
the shimmering and we have to wait for that to dry before we drag the brush and this should be yeah it's nice and dry so now i'm going to bring a little bit of shimmer on those uh, stars and i'll do it with the same brush so you go to where the stars are and just you can either there's two ways of doing this let me get a smaller brush you can get a small brush like this and just barely touch the white and wipe off the paint and the way I test it is like on my hand that has very little paint and I go where the star is and I scrub and it leaves see how it's shining now that's what you want so just go to the stars and bring some light I have fun doing this and remember always touch it on your on your skin if you see a lot of paint that's not good don't do it wait until it's almost dry so I'm only touching where the stars are and closer to the moon I will bring a little bit of more shimmering I'm going back to the white and I will wipe it off on the paper towel again and test it on my hand I don't want to see like brush lines just barely chalk and I'm going to start on the center of the moon to make it brighter and I'm just coming out a little bit outside of the moon see that glow that's all you want now we can go to the stars and give them a nice glow And you know, you can also put shooting stars. I think that's enough, huh? Now let's do some clouds. And for the clouds, you use the same scrappy brush. And the way you load your brush is white and blue. Don't put too much uh, paint on your plate. You notice how little paint we have used on, on this entire painting? So this is how I load. One side white and the other one, the other side blue. And the white color, the lightest color, always goes on the top. And you're going to mix it on your plate. And the way you do that, you touch down until the white turns almost pale blue. And that's what you want. And I'm not pushing it hard. I'm just blending the colors. And that way you do your clouds at once. And we're going to make them come from the outside. So it's making it like a 3D painting pretty much. So I'm going to start here and some of the clouds are going to come close to the moon. And if your moon is not perfect, the clouds will cover it. So remember the light color on the top, the blue on the bottom, and you touch and start scrubbing it down, or not scrubbing, but touching. And I'm gonna have a brush close to me, and I'm gonna smooth the bottom. And I'll even add a little bit of water to smooth the bottom of the clouds. If 
you run out of paint, you can reload it. And remember, mix again. And it's only a couple of clouds, so you don't need to do much. I'll put another one uh, right there. And it's really totally up to you how far do you want the clouds to go. I think that's enough. The clouds are always smooth on the bottom. And if it has too much color, rinse your brush and go back with a clean, clean brush, nothing on it. And just scrub off the, the color if you got too much. And I, I just added white to it because this stayed a little bit on the blue side. So I'm going to kind of create another layer. Okay, let's go to the other side. We'll do it right here. And I'm just touching. And I'll just scrub the bottom. Let's do one more. Usually you don't see uh, clouds at nighttime, but just to add dimension to this painting, we're gonna do it. And once again, it's just a suggestion. If you don't wanna add that, don't. Okay, clouds are done. Let's highlight the trees. And to highlight those trees, I'm going to use this big old brush. And we're gonna use a light green. If that green was still wet, all you have to do is use yellow and then it will mix with the green. But in this case, this is already dry. So I need to use a, um, a very light green. So I'm going to green and add yellow to make a nice light color. And I'm going to the top of the tree and just barely touch it. And the light source is coming from the moon. So this is what you're gonna do. Just touch mainly the right side. Let the left side stay nice and dark. And just go left and right, left and right, and turn your brush to give you that branch feeling. You don't want a straight tree because the branches on the pine trees do not grow straight they bend and see your eye will tell you those are pine trees even though they're just brush strokes 